Well, the Hokies at 20 and 5, 9 and 2 in the ACC. Pitt at 12 and 12, 2 and 9 in conference play. You could not have dialed up better weather on this Easter weekend. 71 degrees, nearly a cloud in the sky, and a first pitch strike to Dom Popa, who was surprisingly hitless in this series. He's gotten off to the best start of its Pittsburgh career. Cut on, it's 0 and 2. Yeah, Pope is one of these Pittsburgh kids that are so critical. They're just a, the fabric of this program. Pope strikes out. His struggles in Blacksburg continue. And Stig impressive. Jay Melendez has two long balls in this series, two for nine with three driven in, including home run back in game one on Thursday. Popa, Melendez, and Cantwell will lead things off with Funk, Bischke, and Fogel providing some pop this weekend as well. Seven Pennsylvania kids in that lineup, RP. That's really what this pit program is all about. You talk to Mike Bell, and, I mean, he's done a great job. It's a roster that has kind of flipped itself over since last year. Runes, you know, 14 transfers, 11 freshmen, but you hit it. They do like the local products. And some of these guys, they sign with other teams, play a couple of years, and then want to come back home to the Steel City, and you embrace them. Mike Bell has embraced that transfer portal and welcomes those players back with open arms. Yeah, 100%. Seven upperclassmen in this lineup. They, they're going to have those old, gritty players who have a lot of college at-bats. Ball and two strikes to Melendez. Junior from Miami. Swung on and missed. Off speed and out in front with a second strikeout. Stig is just a treat, RP. He works really quick. It's three pitches for a strike, and we've already got a swing and the miss on the slider there, two swing and miss on the changeup. And don't underestimate that fastball. Even though it's sidearm, it's going to be up to 94. It looked like he couldn't hear the uh, pitch comm signs coming in. Well, a brief meeting, and everything appears to be okay. Stig, an interesting story. Also played quarterback and wide receiver for his high school football team in McLean. You love the guys that play the multiple sports runes. You know, they just, I don't want to say they have more of an edge about them, but they just seem more well-rounded, if that makes sense. Inner half at 93, and here's Luke Cantwell. Yeah, give me the, all the high school quarterbacks, RP. I'm all in on that. I mean, there's some leadership that comes along at that position. Quickly 0-2 and, and Stig in full control. Yeah, yeah. This may be a short at bat, but Luke Cantwell, the hitter for Pitt, is fun. We'll get a chance to talk about him. Takes low. Junior out of Warrington, Pennsylvania. And the FDU transfer, Fairleigh Dickinson. Got the Juan Soto mannerisms. And Luke Cantwell's a Philly, Philly kid. How about Griffin Stig? Don't be fooled by the 2-9 and nine record in the ACC. This is a team that has some talent that will battle you. And that is exactly what they've done all weekend long in the first two games. Seven to six yesterday, the Panthers won it. It was five to three, and they had the lead here in Blacksburg in game one. Christian Martin will lead things off. Junior from Amherst, Virginia. For your starter there, and a chopper fielded it short over to first, not in time, and Kendro couldn't get enough juice on that ball. It'll be an infield single for Christian Martin. Nothing you can do here. And if you're Ryan Reed, this is, you know, you made a good pitch. Christian Martin's a very good hitter, and you get him to hit a swinging bunt. And you just, because Virginia Tech's so dynamic offensively, you need the outs to be outs. And, no, again, that's that's just your C&I infield single. But a nice pitch by Reed. Martin at first, and here's Carson Demartini. Outside ball one at 90. 312 on the year, the junior from Virginia Beach. And boy, the accolades, the expectations this year after such an incredible start to his career 
You mentioned two years ago, leading Tech into the Super Regionals. He was not afraid of the spotlight, not afraid of the big stage. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, his, his freshman year, 15 home runs and 50 RBIs. Last year with a bad shoulder, still 10 home runs and 57 RBIs. And this year, I really believe this is a kid that's going to be in the, the – he could lead the country in home runs for sure. Upstairs, 2-1. and one. And Demartini looking at that massive shift. I mean, you could hand place a baseball somewhere down the third baseline. It would roll for about two and a half hours. <laughs> Good hustle by Martin on that infield hit to shortstop. A big cut, two and two. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's when you're facing someone like Reed, who's all the way on the first base side of the rubber, and it's that sidearm slot, to stay close with your front shoulder for Martini and go to the left side, nearly impossible. Ground ball to short. Kendro with a nice stab over to first in time for the double play. Tell you, RP, this is a great start for Ryan Reed. This Virginia Tech lineup is scary. That's a nice job by Kendro to get his glove out. Or I should say that's Burroughs probably because of the shift. That's exactly right. It was Keaton Burroughs. And we welcome you to ACC Network Baseball, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Congratulations to Notre Dame handling Syracuse today in lacrosse. Always an entertaining time of year and all of these crossover sports occurring in the springtime. Mike Rooney, Roy Philpott. And a scoreless game in Blacksburg, Virginia. Barely a cloud in the sky on this Easter weekend. And moments ago, Ryan Reed inducing the double play. This one, inside out swing, hammered right to Funk in right field. And a Funk, Bischke, and Fogel will leave things off here in the top of the second. And Stig settles in outside for ball one. Entertaining series here at Blacksburg so far. Five to three, game one on Thursday, seven to six yesterday. In game two, with the Hokies winning the first and the Panthers coming back. 1-1 one, one to Funk. He takes low and away. The seniors played and started in every game a year ago. Swats this win towards right field. And out of play. Funk is is fun for me, RP, because he looks like a football player that showed up at baseball accidentally. I mean, he's so physical, and he can really impact the baseball. It's 11 to pitch frame in the first for Stig. It's Funk fouls that one away. He does. The upper body, right, is something that, that kind of grabs your attention. He's not slight. He's not lean. Yeah, he's he could very easily sneak into football practice, and no one would know the better. Maybe your starting middle linebacker for Coach Narduzzi's squad. 2-2 from Stig. Upstairs and just missed at 95. That is a great pitch, and I'm not sure where that missed, RP. That was, we may be shooting for strike four right now. Stig. The payoff pitch on the way. And a two-hopper up the middle, fielded cleanly by Grady in time. If you're pit, though, you'll take it. I mean, at least it's something. The first three at-bats were just carvage. So, you know, for C.J. Funk, it's a step in the right direction. Stig has been dominant so far. Filthy in that first frame for sure. Here's Tyler Bischke, a senior from Pittsburgh. Leads the Panthers with that 326 batting average. We've talked a lot about the Hokies and what they bring to the table offensively. They've got eight starters today hitting three, ten, or higher. A little bit of a different story for Pitt. Bischke has got a hit in the series so far, and there you see the average. 
It's walked a couple of times, scored a couple. One and one. The position players need to carry the water for Pitt RP. It's an older group, very experienced, talented, but they're they're kind of like those old Red Sox teams where the best version of them is long, grinded out at bats. Bisky over to second, batted down. That was Martin, and he is safely aboard. Well, that ball was hit sharply for sure. Christian Martin tried to fight it off for a moment. I don't know how they'll score it, uh, Roy, but that's blistered. I mean, that ball is almost a beautiful play by Martin. That ball is really well struck. Base knock for Bischke. And the first hit of the game for Pittsburgh. Here comes Fogel. Well, he oh. launched one in a similar part of the ballpark yesterday. More towards right center, and this one in foul territory. This is a park, Roy. You get a ball airborne, it's got a chance. This, this, the ball really moves at this park. And yeah, the wind was a huge factor yesterday. It feels like Runes maybe it's coming a little bit more in towards left today. And there you see the wind whipping around, and the flagpoles are uh, painting the picture for you. Yep. Yeah, right field's going to be a tough – it's going to be a tough place to hit a bomb today, it would seem. Nothing in one. Fogel quickly to first. They'll try to turn two, and the toss back in time. Heads up play by Ebel at first. And, you know, those crowds for the regional and super regional a couple years ago, you know, they're one win from Omaha that year. Big cut by Micheletti to start things off here in the bottom of the second. Senior from Wilmington, Delaware. Eddie Micheletti, probably one of my favorite names in the conference this year. He's got three hits on the weekend. I love good baseball names, Runes, right? Swatted, <laughs> left field. Name. And a base knock for Micheletti. A leadoff man aboard for the Hokies for the second straight frame. The, you can see that for the left-handed hitters for Virginia Tech, they're trying to stay closed use the other side of the field because it's so easy to fly open against someone like Ryan Reed. Now for Demartini, it did not work out. For Micheletti right there, that's a beautiful piece of hitting. Henry Cook digs in. Today's DH. One for eight in the weekend with a couple of driven in. Batting average, a robust 380. Those six homers. He's a real presence in the box, too. Just a, a physical right-handed hitter that can do damage. Hokies at 20-5. and five. I mean, you would have to think that they keep up this pace. They'll be in contention to host at least through the regionals. And it's still early. we got a lot of baseball left. It's not even April. But you can only imagine what this venue is going to look and feel and sound like uh, within 60 days or so. Hammered left field, and that'll get through for a hit. Back-to-back -back singles for the Hokies. First, Micheletti, and now Cook. This offense, RP, is just such a handful. They're so strong. A bunch of left-handed hitters thrown in here. You know, they can line drive you to death. They can leave the yard. There's so many. They, they actually are really skilled in, in, at the little game. So many different ways Virginia Tech can beat you. Ebel do up next. Runners at first and second. Micheletti standing at second base, wearing to bunt and a first pitch strike. There it is right there, RP. Like, this is the number three team nationally in home runs. But do not sleep on the bunting game and the running game. They will do everything. Gary Ebel, 409. Squares to Bunn again and sends it foul. 0-2. Oh How does that change the strategy here, trying to move the runners? I think you know, the, the Bunn attempt was awkward at best, and Ryan Reed is a tough look for to hit, let alone Bunt. And so uh, if you're John Sheff, you might pull it off at this point. Now, again, one of the things John Sheff's concerned about is Ebel's a catcher, and double play is very much in play here. He gets a ball on the ground, it could be two outs. 
We've seen a couple of double plays already. One for the Panthers, one for the Hokies here in the bottom of the second. Stabbed, force out at third across the diamond in time for the double play. And Burroughs, boy, did a great job to just stop the baseball and then quickly corralled it in time to turn two. Really nice job by the freshman Burroughs because it really started to speed up on him here. It's a choppy ball, and you can see that right there. <laughs> Things get a little nerve-wracking right there. Start running out of time on the throw, but that, it's really a composed, nice play by a freshman and in a critical spot. This inning was going the wrong direction. Cook at second base, quickly two outs. And I'm sure for Burroughs, probably felt like the ball was in the air forever. Remain calm throughout, and that was a very nice play under duress. Three double plays already, Runes. How about that? Yeah. I mean, both pitchers pitch with sync, and so it does lend itself to ground balls. Big afternoon yesterday for Ben Watson, who was three for four. Outer half and just missed. Another one of these great stories, Ben Watson's from Elizabethtown College. It was a, just a rock star in Division III. We've seen a lot of that in the ACC. Duke, uh, Virginia, uh, now here at Virginia Tech, Division III kids who are thriving. Pitt also has a player that transferred All in right. from Division II. I mean, that's the era we live in right now with the portal. I mean, you're looking mm -hmm. to upgrade your roster, and sometimes it comes from the prep school ranks, and sometimes runes it doesn't. Yeah, and the Division II and Division III kids are mostly grad transfers, and for me, that's the real gold in, in, in the transfer portal. Those are kids that have played four seasons, four summers. They're just so skilled. Cook dancing around at second, served into left field, and let's see if they wave Cook around. Yes, they do. And the throw, not in time. The Hokies on the board first, and a clutch two-out RBI off the bat of Ben Watson. I just love how aggressive Virginia Tech is. Henry Cook's really a catcher, but an athletic catcher, and he's going all the way right here. There seemed like no chance that they were stopping him right there. It's really not a bad defensive play if you're pit. With two outs, the runner is coming like gangbusters. Big pickup after the double play by Ben Watson. He's at first base and a big cut for Ethan Gibson, who got the start today at first base, start number seven this year. You want to know how a team wins 20 games, its first 25 attempts. We've got a clutch A-B like what we just saw from Watson to set the tone in a rubber match against Pittsburgh. And first season for Ethan Gibson. He has acclimated himself fairly well. And Reed battles back to record his first strikeout, but the damage done with 25th pitch on the way from Stig. Bins on the inner half for a called strike to Tanner Grawl. So first time today the Panthers have had the leadoff man aboard. Hard to believe the penultimate day of March today. I mean, before you know it, Runes, we're going to see you on the selection show. We're going to be breaking down regionals and talking about who didn't make the tournament and who was able to sneak in in the last moment as you look at Graw's numbers over the weekend, one for six. It is crazy. I mean, this is for these two teams, this is their fourth ACC series. Wow. This is really the halfway point of the season. Little nubber over to short. And the hesitation by Grady means everybody's going to be safe. RP, I wonder if that was hit and run because Kendro got on second base in a blink. I, I think he's, he kind of shocked Grady, too, who's an excellent defender. Let's see if Kendro's, yeah, he's moving. Oh, I love this. Hit and run. And Grady didn't realize it, and then... Graw's enough of a runner to make, and I'll tell you, I love this for Mike Bell because you're just not going to piece a bunch of hits together against Griffin Stig. You're going to have to execute. 
So the hit and run works to perfection. Kendro now at second. But it back to Stig. Only play at first. And the throw was wide. Everybody is safe. Now Gibson was pulled off the bag by the toss. Bases are loaded for Pittsburgh. Wow. I mean, bunt, hit and run, bunt. Stig bare hands this. I wonder what kind of a grip he had. Remember, Gibson, I don't think, is your natural first baseman. Oh, are they calling the runner out? At oh, man. They will roll him out. That is a really bad break for Pitt. So the call stands. Ugh. Burrows back into the dugout. <laughs> Tough call if you're a fan of the Panthers. Burrows retired on the interference. So Kedro at third, Grawl at second, and a first pitch just missed from Stig back to the top of the order. And Dom Popa, we would suggest he could be due. That would be the understatement of this series. Yet to record a hit. It's only reached one time. That was yesterday. But a chance to do some damage. Stayed back on it into right field. That's exactly what he does. Kendro comes in to score. Right behind him is Grawl, and here comes Pitt. After just, you know, getting dominated by Stig in his first at bat, that's a really nice job by Popa. That's a changeup, the pitch that gave him a hard time the first at bat, and he absolutely hammers that into right field. That's a really good at bat to at bat adjustment by Popa. Tied at one, round now at second. So the interference play really messed with a lot of things there, and what could have transpired because the base runner goes back. And Runes, when you go back and look at it, I still didn't see anything there that would warrant what the call was as Melendez is 0 for 1. Yeah, because, I mean, he did run out of the runner's lane in the beginning, but there was no play at that time. You can tell Stig trying to settle back in. Lost command for a moment. It's 3-0. Oh. Upstairs and the Panthers load them up. Ground now goes to third. Popa at second. And Melendez at first. Great staff. Kurt Elvin, Tyler Hansen, Ryan Fecto. Uh, these guys are, are they're analytically driven. They're, they've got good baseball instincts. It's just an excellent coaching staff at Virginia Tech. Meeting of the mound comes to a close. The first walk issued by Stig goes to Melendez. And a chance to do some serious damage for Luke Cantwell. 92 and way outside. I think if you're Stig, you just got to, I mean, easy to say, but your stuff is the right, his sinker is the pitch you want here. And that clipped him, and that'll drive in a run. Cantwell will trot down to first. And for Stig, it's the seventh time he has hit a batter this year. Uh, baseball's so funny, RP. Like the slide, to me, he, that's a slider right there. And because Stig airman, you know, the, the first sinker was just way, it was a big miss. So maybe you trick yourself into calling the slider and then you end up with the hit by pitch. So Pitt's really on to something here. Popa now at third, Melendez at second, Cantwell at first for C.J. Funk. Grounded out his first plate appearance. Hitting cleanup today for the Panthers trying to win their first ACC series of the year. 
Nothing in two. Stig trying to battle back. As Funk hammers it foul straight behind him. This is important right here, RP, because Stig's still got a low pitch count, 38 pitches. He's got great stuff. If you don't do damage on him this inning for Pitt, I don't know how many chances you're going to get. So a big moment in this game and in this series, and Funk strikes out. So the first strikeout for Stig since back in the first frame. Three sliders and just, I mean, th these are vintage sliders, right? Started on the plate where the hitter feels like he's got to commit and then right it run, off, uh, run it right off the plate. Those are beautiful pitches. So Stick started the game, Ruin striking out the side in the first. Giving up a couple of hits since then and now two runs. His team trailing the Panthers by a run. Off speed and inside, it's 79. To Tyler Bischke. Had a knock and was later erased on a 3-6-3 double play in the second. Time is called. Bishke batting out of the five hole. Stig his story is interesting. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, RP. Well, I was just going to say, his story is interesting. And we've talked about the portal, all the different places that Bishke has played college baseball. And let's see, Mike Bell comes out for a moment. I think Mike Bell is just trying to slow things down because Stig pitches very up tempo, and you could see it was immediately affecting Bishke. So I, this is a, a smart visit by Mike Bell. I think he's just trying to take a, you know, maybe take a little air out of this game. Yeah, Stig's ready to roll. When you think about how this inning began with a bunt hit, an infield hit, interference at first, it's been kind of choppy. Panthers have been able to grind out two runs. An unfortunate frame for Stig, and if you're a fan of the Hokies, I was going to say for Bischke, he's played college baseball at Kent State. He's played baseball at Murray College State. And most recently at the University of New Orleans. Two hits on the weekend here in Blacksburg, and this one out of play and foul. It's really a super smart recruiting strategy or roster building strategy by Pitt. Let these kids go get a bunch of at-bats, maybe even in the south, and then if they're ready to come home for a final season of college baseball, by all means. Yeah, originally from Pittsburgh and now a senior. And it's kind of the new way of doing business in the portal era. And, I mean, this applies in baseball. I think maybe in baseball more than basketball, but in football as well where – you know, sometimes you just want to leave your hometown. You do it. The grass isn't greener. And Stig battles back. Most unusual frames you will see in the top half of the third. Griffin Stig throws, what, 21 pitches. He faces eight batters, gives up two runs. And here's Clay Grady. Two for six in the series, right at his season average. Ball and a strike to count. That runner interference call, RP, it feels like in college baseball we've seen that as a factor more and more in big moments, and that's a huge play in this game. I mean, they were going to have bases loaded, nobody out there. Brady slugs this one foul. Indeed, a ball and two strikes. Probably unbeknownst, unbeknown to most is Grady leads the ACC in triples, one of my – Favorite plays in baseball. There's nothing like a triple. Three bagger. <laughs> Gotta love it. Both teams hacking today. Grady serves this one foul down the right field line. There's a kid at USC RP, Austin Overn. He's a, he was a wide receiver on their football team. Their center fielder now, and he's done with football, but obviously he flies. He had 15 triples last year. That's like an alien number. Like, how do you oh have gosh. 15 triples? <laughs> I don't think I caught a lot of Pac-12 baseball last year, but hearing that number makes me wish that I did. Two hopper over to short. And in. So a good play by Kendro at short. Brings us back to the top of the order where Christian Martin's got a base hit already this afternoon. 
Maroons, I don't feel like either one of these teams are getting cheated at the plate with uh, some of the hacks we've seen. Low and away, it's 2-0. and oh. Yeah, I think, you know, Pitt, whereas Pitt's lineup is more those long at-bats and foul pitches off and take borderline pitches, Virginia Tech is hyper-aggressive, and to me, pitching to them is exhausting. Because of the pressure they put on you, just every pitch feels like it could be a ball in the gap or a home run. It, they're just... Virginia Tech, to me, is a very scary lineup to navigate. Currently in first place in the Coastal Division. The 3-0 to Martin. Didn't get the green light. 3-1. Talking with John Shep this week, and he reminded us of what he has said previously, that you know, Martin sometimes gets overlooked. I think he was hesitant to use that word, but with Martini batting in the two-hole and a one-out walk issued to Christian Martin sometimes. Maybe he doesn't get the kind of publicity that he could deserve. Take a look at the D1 rankings coming in two today for the Hokies. And a power surge would be a bit of an understatement. Third in the country in home yeah. runs trailing, what, Tennessee and Georgia right now? And that's it? Yep. Yeah, and just to be clear, that is those are national ranks out of 305 programs. <laughs> like, that is, those are video game numbers. And Demartini pacing the ACC in the long ball department. A big cut on a pitch out of the zone. Demart grounded into that double play, 5-6-3. That was first time up in the first inning. Hokies have had a runner aboard in every frame so far. Reed would love to turn another double play. And he would chase Martin back to first. Yeah, and even though Demartini is a double play his first at bat, he's got unshakable confidence. Just it's there, there's a belief system there that's infectious to your team, and I, I'm sure Virginia Tech feels like they're going to win every day because Carson Demartini's on their team. He, this is not just a stat producer. This is there's a real leadership gene here. Yeah, Coach Chef said the players tend to follow Carson, which you could expect. And again, it goes back to his freshman year. Everything he brought to the table. He'll face the massive shift again with the third baseman playing about 50 yards off the line. And Burroughs will concede a lot of real estate. Big cut and a big strikeout for Reed. I, uh, this slider is just really difficult for left-handed hitters, RP. I mean, you th it's... Basically, that slider's coming from the 4-3 hole, and then it doesn't even get to the outer third. It just stays in on you. So, you know, you're really your only choice is to take that pitch, but it's so hard to see it well. Again, Reed is just a problem for left-handed hitters. Two strikeouts. The slider again, this time off the plate. It'll be kind of zero, Virginia Tech hitter. Give Reed some credit. He has battled back after facing some early adversity. Leadoff man aboard in the first two innings. Canizero flied out to right his first plate appearance. Chris, a graduate student from Staten Island, New York. Also dealing with a shift. Pops it foul. Over behind first base, and it stays in play. Well, a nice play by Cantwell, who had just enough room to record the third out. Tooth technology in 1988. <laughs> there should have been. We were all unfortunate to not experience that back in the day. Good ball game. Back in Blacksburg, top of the fourth. Pittsburgh here in the rubber match. A one-run advantage against Virginia Tech at English Field. And Fogel will lead things off. Had the homer yesterday in that 3 Home run second inning for the Panthers. Kind of got the party started. Good stab at first. Gibson comes up with it for out number one. I'll tell you, RP, Virginia Tech, they're so offensive. They're looking for some stability at first base defensively. They don't need the extra offense. And, you know, for me, Gibson's got two players or two plays that I've circled that have been exceptional, including the 3-6-3 uh, double play. 
Yeah, that one in the second. I was wondering if he had enough time to turn it. He did. And that ended the pit scoring threat. Yeah, good call by you. Here's Kendro. Jake's one for one. Awkward swing. Mike Bell in year number six in Steel City. Florida State graduate from 1996, of course, the great Mike Martin. Always fun to catch up with, Coach. Just has a way about him, and you mentioned the strategy of bringing in some of the local talent after they've signed to go play somewhere else. Oof. And Stig, back in the zone, records strikeout number six as Kendro is retired. You know, and to me, RP, Stig, first of all, just been dominant. You know, a, a little bit of traffic last inning, but it was more execution. Mike Bell has made a real difference at Pitt. Three straight ACC tournaments for them. That's never been done in the program before. This is a guy that, you know, was coached and played for the, the legend Mike Martin. And, I, you know, Mike Martin, the late Mike Martin, obviously his fingerprints all over this league. Link Jarrett and, you know, Mike Bell here. And it's, uh, you know, Mike Bell's been to Omaha six times, twice as a player, once as an assistant at, at Tennessee and Oklahoma and Florida State twice. So he knows what it looks like. Graw on the nails over to short. Grady comes up with it cleanly. And a one-two. Yeah, uh, for me, RP, I love all of that, right? Like, it's if you're Mike Bell, that's exactly what you should do because Griffin Stig works so fast, he will just overwhelm your lineup. And if you're Griffin Stig, like, that fire that he pitches with, that's part of what makes him great. So, yeah, give me all of that, please. I like the drama. That's what I heard. Nicoletti, <laughs> slow roller over to second. The throw is high by Bischke. And the Hokies will have a runner at second base to start off home half of the fourth. Nicoletti aboard on the E4. This is not an easy play. I wonder if Bischke could have flipped that, worked around and flipped that underhand. I, mean, I, I think he actually could have. Because this is something you can't do when you play Virginia Tech is give them freebies. They're so good without you helping. Hokies trying to get momentum back after Stig's seven-pitch frame. And immediately Micheletti aboard on the E4. And so here comes Henry Cook. Cook has moved around. Coach Chef's batting order this season. Over to third. And a nice dig by Burroughs in time for out number one. That is a big out by Ryan Reed right there. A nice play by Burroughs, the freshman who has been very steady in this game. Every time it felt like Virginia Tech was about to just start to let it out, Ryan Reed has had a ground ball that he's really done a nice job pitching at the bottom of the zone. Reed, the sophomore from Ridley Park, Pennsylvania. His mother, Sherry, played field hockey and softball in college. Ebel takes a first pitch strike. His grandfather, Ralph, played in the minors for the Pirates organization. Ebel hitting that double play. It's only time up in the second. The 0 1 popped up. Boy, a lot of room here at English Field in foul territory. And the grab made right up against the wall. Yeah, any ball in the air, you got to stay with it because the wind is really moving these baseballs. That's a great play by Jaden Melendez. Not an easy play. Battling the shadows coming in and out of the sunshine as he made that maneuver towards the netting right behind home plate. So how about Reed? He battles back. Nicoletti's still at second. But it does feel like it's a spacious ballpark when it comes to the foul territory runes. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the, the way the wind is blowing, you see the, those flags going sideways. Like any ball in the air has got a chance to come right back on the field. Yeah. Lane Stadium in the background, right behind the left field wall. Always a tremendous sight. And you think about inner Sandman and what's to come. 
Brent Pry later this fall. He's gotten things moving in the right direction. If you're a fan of Virginia Tech. Heck of an atmosphere. Looks like fun. That's on my bucket list right there. It should be. We need to get you in. Experience it. Maybe they'll allow you to walk out with the team. Like right as <laughs> Inner Sandman gets cranked up and everybody's jumping around. I mean, it's seismic just with the tradition and the noise and everything that comes around, especially for a night game. Ball and two strikes to Watson. And this one sent foul down the left field line. In this Virginia Tech lineup, you've got Watson here, who's a fifth-year guy who's, you know, hit well over 400 in Division Three, sitting here in the seven hole, hitting 390. Chat with Mike Bell coming up as soon as this inning comes to a close. Read a pitch away potentially from doing exactly that. Rubber match between these two. Through the hole, right side for a base hit. Micheletti on his horse coming home. He will score, and we are tied at two. How about Ben Watson this afternoon? Mr. Clutch. Both of his RBIs with two outs, too, to your point, RP. And, you know, a little bit of a C and I single right there, but still a very tough matchup left on left. Micheletti's a big man, but he moves. Both Virginia Tech runs scored off the bat of Ben Watson, both with two outs, both in a two-strike count. Watson remains at first. See if Ethan Gibson can make an adjustment. I, I'm sold on the defense. His first at bat, he was fairly overwhelmed by Reed. See if it, it, it's not a more competitive at bat this time. Nothing in one at 89 for Ryan Reed. Gibson hitting 280. After that second inning strikeout, closed down the frame. Ball and a strike. One well, of the sights and sounds, the smells of springtime as we emerge from that winter frost around the conference. Ball and two strikes to count. A day like today reminds you of what college baseball is all about. A rubber match, conference rivals, two teams trying to continue to prove their worth. The wind blowing around at 15 miles an hour, kind of keeping you cool, even if the sunshine warms you up. Pitch number 54 from Ryan Reed. Let's do it again. And these weekend series, RP, are so pivotal. You, you know, you're in this league, the ACC. There's no bottom to this league anymore. I mean, now everybody's invested in baseball. Everybody's competitive. Everybody's regional caliber or above. And so, you know, for Virginia Tech to, to rack up a fourth, weekend series win that would be huge for them low and away two and two it feels like as each weekend goes by another series victory for the Hokies more and more confidence not that John Chef's team needs it but you can just feel the surge of momentum well we know their ACC schedule is going to get more difficult but, you know, it, it'd be really nice to take four straight series weekend wins into that, that slate where, you know, obviously Virginia Tech's very capable too. Capable and confident is a very dangerous combination. Indeed it is. Reed with two strikeouts. 91 loss control. Full count. Well, I don't, I don't get to make the lineup for... Straight. Sorry, RP, I don't get to make the lineup for John Sheff, but I am quickly becoming an Ethan Gibson fan. The defense, and this is a much better at bat. Gibson showing his patience. Eighth pitch of the A-B coming. Inside for ball four. And the second walk issued by Ryan Reed. The Hokies still with 
Knows what he's doing on the diamond. Watson at second, Gibson at first, inside for ball one. Boy, this is getting dicey. If you're Ryan Reed, he's kind of lost it a little bit, hence the visit to the mound, and that slider was a little wobbly there too. So can he make one more pitch and get out of this frame? Ground ball straight to short. Up with it is Kendro. The force out at second is there to retire Gibson, and Reed escapes further. Joining us right now, uh, Coach, what did you tell Ryan Reed? What has he given you so far this afternoon in this start? You know, he's given us a chance. I mean, that, and that's all you can really ask for. He's doing a good job of keeping the ball down. Uh, we've made some some defensive plays, rolling a couple double plays uh, for him. He's a contact guy. It's an awkward angle. It's, it's a tough at bat. Um, you know, we let one get away there with a the leadoff guy got on. Um, but he's, he's done a good job of giving us a chance. Hey, Mike, Stig was so dominant in the first inning, and then your guys really made – I mean, that third inning was a beautiful inning. What were you told on the runner interference call? That that seemed 50-50 to us. Yeah, it, it's one of those tricky rules. It's, it's in the rule book, and it's a rule, and they, they got to fight. To, they got to get in that runner's lane, uh, even though the base is on the other side. And I know we've talked about possibly going to double bases down the road, and maybe this is one of those cases. And you really only see it come from a catcher's throw. You never really see it come from a pitcher's throw, but – um, the, it was his judgment that we never made an attempt, and uh, that's that's just kind of where we fell there. Mike, appreciate the time. Best of luck here in game three of the series. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all you do for college baseball. Head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers, Mike Bell, year number six in the Steel City. And leading things off is Burroughs, 9-1-2. and two. Burroughs, Popa, and Melendez. Ball on a strike with Stig working quickly. Well, you got to love his pace if you're a fan of baseball. He's not going to leave a lot of time on the pitch clock. Burrows over to short. Grady with it cleanly. And fires a strike for out number one. But, it's, yeah, Stig, he, not only does he work quick, but he just floods the strike zone with pitches. You know, RP, I want to say something about Mike Bell. It's, you know, not just the success that Pitt is having under him, but think about, you know, programs coming for his assistant coaches. Joe Mercadante is now the head coach at North Florida. Ty McGay, he's now the recruiting coordinator at Florida State. So, you know, the three straight ACC tournaments is something people have noticed, but th this is a program that's generated a lot of respect. Dom Popa sends it over to Martin at second and quickly two away. Isn't it crazy? Griffin Stig, RP, this is Virginia Tech's number three starter. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, he Brett Renfro's been brilliant on Fridays as a true freshman. Stig could very easily be a Friday guy, right? Like he could be a game one starter. But I'm telling you, Virginia Tech, between this offense and how what great strike throwing they get from the rotation and the bullpen is really shaping up, This I don't think this team's going anywhere. No, I don't either. And the one thing that impresses me about Stig is his presence. You know, we talked about the stare down going back two innings ago now. He has a little swagger about him that feels more like a Friday night starter, to be honest with you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and there's another offensive conference by Pitt. And believe me, RP, that's not the talk strategy. That is they're trying to, they're <laughs> trying to bug Griffin Stig. And who could blame him? Nothing in one. Jaden Melendez just walked in, struck out today. We mentioned Stig. He was former high school quarterback. Played some wide receiver. Runes, you'll love this. Also a center on the basketball team. So, I mean, literally, he played nice. all three major sports. So the athleticism, well documented, and he brings that to the table. Now a couple of seasons into his career, college baseball with Virginia Tech. He's like that boxer, too, RP, where he's not feeling you out in the first inning or in the first round. He's coming out of the corner and running at you. You know, like from the first pitch of the game, it's up-tempo. You can actually shut the, the pitch clock off the days Griffin Stig pitches. He's not going to need that. He, you know, he, he 10 seconds is too long for him. Yeah, the clock is a distraction for our viewers today. You don't need the pitch clock. Yes. Two and one the count to Jaden Melendez. His brother, MJ, has played for the Kansas City Royals. Now three balls and a strike. His dad, of course, a college coach. He's had a good season. A team high eight home runs, two this weekend. 
In a tie game, every pitch, every A-B critical. Winner of this game wins the series. And this inning continues. So a good eye and a good take by Jaden Melendez. And you can be sure Pitt's going to use all of their offensive conferences today, RP, based on, you know, it, it does seem to bug Stig. Second walk issued by Griffin Stick. How many different sports did you play in high school back in the day, Runes? I played two for my high school team, but I, I would have loved to have played basketball. Up the middle into center field. That one sneaks through for a knock. And now Pittsburgh with trouble brewing. Runners at first and second, two away. Cantwell is aboard for the second time this afternoon. Yeah, the, whereas Carson Martini is the, the heartbeat of the Virginia Tech team. Luke Cantwell, even though it's year one for him, he's become that for Pitt, just a guy that plays with incredible joy and swagger. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of theatrics to Luke Cantwell's game, and I, I, I'm, I'm all in. It is awesome. So Coach Fecto out of the Virginia Tech dugout. Stig now at 61 pitches and was in firm control, it felt like, until – Maybe these last two hitters in a tie ball game. What's the message at this point, Runes? Yeah, I think, you know, Stig can – the stuff has been great. He's throwing the ball beautifully. But, you know, he can get himself probably too amped up at times. And I think if you're Ryan Fecto, you know, th th this is you, – you've got a really good feel for that and you're just coming out there to try and get Stig to take a deep breath because when he executes pitches, he's going to win most of those battles. You know, the offensive conferences occurring have disrupted the rhythm of number 26 on the mound, Griffin Stig. Stig versus Funk with two aboard. And C.J., the senior, takes a first pitch strike. Funk 0 for 2. Struck out in his last plate appearance. That was in the third inning, pitch number 63 from Stig. Melendez at second, Cantwell at first. And Ebel had to reach away to grab that pitch. We're talking with Mike Bell before he came on the air, asking about the weather. He goes, I've been here, we've seen sleet, we've seen rain, we've seen sunshine, we've seen wind. He said today it couldn't be any better than it is. And we would certainly agree, 72 degrees. That breeze will keep you cool or maybe help you out if you're standing in that sunshine cleanly. This one powered into that wind, and it'll knock it down quickly. Micheletti, it dropped right in front of him. And a run scores. Pittsburgh has the lead. Three to two. Racing home was Melendez. And all smiles standing at first base for C.J. Funk. Well, you think about it, Roy, so the wind is just howling uh, for in to home plate. And Micheletti did not see the ball off the bat, so he took a step back and then kind of panicked sprinting in on the ball. He may have thought that ball was over his head or would have tracked back just a tiny bit. So regardless, I think Eddie Micheletti would tell you that's got to be an out. Runes off the bat, I'm thinking that's a pop fly into the frame. Instead, Pittsburgh grabs the lead. Runners at first and third. Another pitch hit way in the air in foul territory. And this one sliced through the win over there on the concourse. Runes, I'm reminded this is the first baseball game I've been able to call coming off a of basketball season. You come to the ballpark, and chances are you're going to see something you've never seen before. Yep. It's been that kind of afternoon here in the rubber match between Pitt and Virginia Tech, a series that started back in 1980. Panthers lead it 3-2, to two, and now nothing into the count to Bischke. One of those innings right here, right? The first two hitters, Stig just dominates Burroughs and Popa. Two very quick outs, and then uh, a walk, first pitch single up the middle, and then a can of corn. Next thing you know, 3-2 Pitt. Two out magic for Pittsburgh. Hey, 
One and two the count. Tyler Bischke. Stig, you can sense his frustration, and he will pound the zone again to record his seventh strikeout. Coach, the wind uh, a little different today in some respects. What are you seeing down there, and how does it impact this game? Uh, I mean, it's impacted a lot. It just impacted it a lot. Just gave them the lead. So it's, uh, it's not working in our favor right now. Hey, John, Griffin Stieg has been throwing – I mean, it, his stuff is so good. It's you got to check yourself, remind yourself, this is your game three starter. Yep. Your rotation has been a real area of strength this year. What has yes. that meant to this club? It's meant a lot being able to run that guy out there on Sunday. He's, he's, he's been competitive. He's, he's kept us in ball games. We've usually played pretty well behind him. We just have to play better in the back half of this game. Coach, appreciate your time. Best of luck rest of the way. Thank you, guys. John Chef, Virginia Tech head man. Check it in. Bruins, I did want to ask about the win. I had to ask about the win, right? I mean, it was good. It was, yeah. a, it was a factor on that last play. The question is how big of a factor. And off the bat, it felt like Funk was going to fly out in the inning. But, I mean, the weather forecast today suggested winds gusting as high as 15 miles an hour. I'm no meteorologist, although I would like to be one one day when I grow up. That is faster than 12 to 15 miles an hour. That looks more like 30 <laughs> to 40 miles yeah. an hour. That looks like a hokey hurricane. It's Driven, good. right field, all the way back to the wall, and that ball is gone. Martin exits the ballpark, and we are tied at three. Boy, this is interesting, RP. Like, I didn't think a ball could get out of here to right field. Martin left on left. He catches it out in front and really gets into this ball. And it does feel like the wind maybe shifted a tiny bit where it wasn't howling in from right field. But you can see if, if you're Christian Martin, that's a tough matchup to drive a ball out of the yard to the pull side. That's something. There's some kind of spin. There was some kind of magic on that ball that allowed it to slice right through the breeze. I mean, that defies physics, weather, and everything else under the sun, literally. But a brand-new ball game, and for Coach Chef, hey, the wind didn't hurt you that time, Coach. No. So the first pitch strike here to Demartini not, was not well received by John Chef, and I like that by Kurt Elbin, their third base coach, who's outstanding. Go talk to Demartini and just make sure he's good to go because you really have stolen some momentum back here. There's Coach Elbin. That's a future head coach right there, RP. Again, this this coaching staff at Virginia Tech is just excellent. Martini takes low. It's a ball and a strike. Look at the first pitch here, Runes. I mean, it's probably a strike. It's just where the way Melendez caught it that I think upset people. Melendez was set up way away, and he missed in. I think the way Melendez caught it made it seem more egregious than maybe it was. Now, the one thing I will tell you, Kurt Elbin, he gets a first-place vote on the all-beard team in the ACC this year. Talk to me, Runes. Yeah, red, red beard for the win. Come on. Any, any red beard's a good beard. That is solid. That is a baseball beard if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Left-handed hitters having success today, operating at times into the teeth of that wind in unexpected ways. A full count. A run is in for DeMart. It just, it's remarkable to me. Like, I, w the left-handed hitters having success today is shocking to me, quite honestly, because Ryan Reed is such a rough look for these guys. But I think what it reminds us is these just aren't ordinary left-handed hitters for Virginia Tech. These are top-shelf, legit left-handed hitters. Left-handed hitters so far, five for eight with a walk. And how about Reed recording the strikeout? That'll be his third, so the punch-out retires Martini. Very impressed with Ryan Reed. After you just gave up a home run, you come back and battle one of the best hitters in the ACC. And, uh, you know, I, if you're Carson Dean Martini, I could see where you'd be a little bit not pleased with that. The safer play is to foul it off, but 
That is, that's a big zone. Now Melendez did a pretty brilliant job framing that pitch as well. And he snapped it right back up on the full count toss. 1-0 to Canizero. Launches this one deep to left field. Canizero. And a home run. The only question, was it fair or foul? And finally, the indication, Virginia Tech grabs a lead at 4-3. to three. With this Virginia Tech offense, RP, it's the old Michael Jordan thing. You might contain it. You're not going to stop it. And it always feels, when you f see this Virginia Tech offense, it's a matter of time before they're going to get on you. It's a 1-0 hanging slider. Canizero <laughs> knew it. Uh, now it's a party. That ball was not even considering staying in the stadium. Ryan Reed knew it. <laughs> You saw the bat flip about a third of the way down the first baseline for Canizero. So the homer by Martin to lead the inning off. Canizero after Demartini struck out. And 1-0 and oh, the count to Micheletti for the Hokies, who are hammering in the bottom of the fifth. It was interesting what John Sheff said, RP, about how they usually play really well behind Griffin Stig. And even though the defense, you know, maybe not so much, the offense has had his back today. When he has given up runs or, you know, the Pitt has been on Stig a little bit, this inning a perfect example. Stig very frustrated to give up a run last inning, and the Virginia Tech offense absolutely has his back here in this half. Christian Martin, Chris Canizero, the Hokies, thinking back two years ago. That magnificent run, Canizero's seventh long ball of the season. And for Martin, it will be his fifth. And that one came inside to Micheletti. He was grazed by that pitch, so he'll trot down to first. And with just one out, Ryan Reed facing some issues in this inning. Yeah, and it's you can see on Ryan Reed's face, this is a slider, and that really frustrates a pitcher. You hit a guy, and you didn't even hit him with your, your heat. Four to three ball game. Mike Rooney, Roy Philpott. Hokies have grabbed the lead for the second time today with a two spot, courtesy of two homers, one by Martin, the other by Canizero moments ago. And here's Henry Cook. Today, the DH takes low and away for ball one from Firevet. Base knock in the second inning, grounded out to third, the second time up. Big cut evens the count with Micheletti at first. He was hit by a pitch. Another impressive looking athlete for head coach John Chef. Bottom dropped out all the way out of the zone at 83. It's two balls and a strike. Yeah, for Firevet, it's it, there'll be conviction in the breaking ball that you won't see a ton of fastballs. He's going to keep spinning it at both left handed and right handed hitters. It's two good breaking pitches. One run game. Downstairs, three and one. Firevet also played at Tallahassee Community College. After Mike Bell makes his first call to the bullpen. Runners now at first and second. So Micheletti was hit by a pitch by Reed. Firevet comes in and promptly walks the first batter that he has faced. 2022 team that went to game three of a Super Regional. 27 appearances, 72 punch outs that year. First pitch strike, Garrick Ebel.
Big series for the Hokies trying to stay in front of North Carolina in the ACC Coastal. Half game in front of the Tar Heels, ranked 14th. Hokies at number 13. Firevet has found the zone, and Ebel 0 for 2. A beautiful Easter weekend Saturday in Blacksburg. Wind howling. It has wreaked havoc in this game at various points, including the top half of this inning. Ball and two strikes. Ball was hit hard out in the right field. It should have been a fly out. Micheletti instead. The wind batted it down. Run scored. Pittsburgh grabbed the advantage only for a short time. And a big cut dug out by Melendez for out number two. Now the ACC spring football schedule starts next Saturday. Our huddle preview show. What will things look like? Quarterback. Think back to Beamer ball. I saw Michael Vick in that sugar bowl back in the day when it was just like you couldn't even believe what your eyes were seeing. Like it was a video game. He was so... You know, just throw. It was like Nolan Ryan, but with turbo wheels. You know, like just crazy arm strength. No one could tackle him. It was outrageous how good he was. Here's Ben Watson. He has been Mr. Clutch. Two, two out, two strike, RBI, base knocks. He came in clutch. We mentioned if you're going to win 20 games right out of the gate like the Hokies have, you got to have guys like. Ben Watson is sitting down to the lower third of the order, just coming up with incredible ABs late. Nicoletti at second, Cook at first. Watson hitting nearly 400. It's a ball and two strikes. I just I love what John Chef told us about Watson. You know, hey, this is the ACC. Uh, you know, the very top of Division One baseball. And no offense, but, you know, Ben Watson came from Division Three, and, and, you know, John Sheff, we asked, like, how do you re how do you f square that in recruiting? And he said, hey, the kid hit way over 400 in Division Three baseball, and the hand-eye coordination was off the charts, and we, th we thought it would work. And, man, were they right. He's been really good for these guys. Elizabethtown is where he was playing ball. Coach Chef also told us, you know, when we go out recruiting, it's one thing to know who you want. It's another thing to know who you don't want. And this staff knows who we don't want in the era of the portal. That becomes a big deal because you bring guys in that on paper you think would be a match, but you sit down and have a conversation with them. Hey, they're in the portal for a reason sometimes, many times. It's not a good fit. Three balls and two strikes, and so now both runners – We'll get a head start with Micheletti at second and Cook at first. Boy, the, the, this game is hanging in the balance right here on this pitch. I mean, the, Virginia Tech's got a chance to break this thing wide open. Already an eventful home half of the fifth. The homer's hit by Martin. And a zero. Nice and the board. floater drops in for a called strike three. Fire vent. State, boy, this league, it's just... Every weekend, you better buckle your chin strap. Mike Rooney, Roy Philpott, top of the sixth inning. Four to three, our score. The Hokies going for another series victory. A rubber match against Pitt today. And Runes, let's see how Stig comes out after that long half inning. And the number of times that Pittsburgh has battled back. And will we see more of those uh, offensive conferences that lead to delays and frustration for number 26 on the mound today? Well, I only think Pitt gets one more, so that's the good news for Griffin Stig. They've used two. But you can Fast see he, he – yeah, I'm sorry, RP. He, he ended last inning a little flustered, and he's – Yeah. This inning's still not back in that groove. It kind of fighting it a little bit. Fighting it for sure. Pitch 73 coming up. That last pitch, a fastball tailing out of the zone. 92, heart of the plate. It's 3-1. and one. Hokies do have activity in their bullpen. The 3-1 to Fogel. Nubs it, center field, and it spins down for a base hit. Right in front of Watson, leadoff man aboard for the Panthers. 
Jeremy Neff getting loose in the Virginia Tech bullpen, and we will see how long John Sheff wants to stick with Stig. I mean, that's a good pitch right there by Stig, but the count is the problem. 3-1 count. That's been very unlike him. He's had count leverage most of the day. So see if there's not strike one early in this count for Stig. Leadoff man aboard for the Panthers. Fogel had one of those long homers yesterday with the win assisting, and here's Kendro. It's been an interesting day, an uneven day at times. For Griffin Stig, he's tied his career high in strikeouts with seven. But fighting at times with this Pittsburgh lineup, 2-0 oh the count. That's a Kendrow's good trip right here. Sorry, RP. You can see Stig is visibly agitated. I, this is, you know, I don't know if this came from the bench or this was just Ebel deciding on his own, but I think this is very smart. Couple of deep breaths, some encouragement from his veteran catcher. Stig's still can very much it. a foot. Yeah, he's a football player at heart still. RP, like he's 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 looking for uh, contact. He he would like to to somebody call a running play and go make a hit right now. Well, it's like the quarterback that gets the start that doesn't settle in until after he gets that first hit. He gets knocked down. Pops back up. That's what Stig was in high school. Starting center for the basketball team. This one's hammered in foul territory and out of play. Again, the first time you see Stig RP, you're thinking, no way that's your th game three starter. I mean, it's, you know, he touched 95 early in the game. It's all kinds of life on the fastball. Slider and change up for a strike anytime he wants it. Out straight back. Kendro with a good cut. Started his career at Tennessee. He's part of that team that made the trip to Omaha last year. But a Pittsburgh native coming back home. On played volleyball at Pitt. And the 2 2 from Stig. Hammered. Left field, drifting back against the wall. Off the carom. Did he hold on to it? He did not. That's a homer. Kendro exits the ballpark, and Pittsburgh grabs the lead right back. Well, a collision with the wall right as the ball reached the glove. And Canizero did everything he could to try to keep it in the yard and could not. I'll tell you, RP, the base running got a little wonky here. At base and stay foul. Oh, goodness. And waiting on the official word, Matthew Schaefer. And there it is, and Mike Bell cannot believe it. So one away, and Runes, you take one run off the board, right? And now we are tied at four after the runners cross paths between first and second on a bang-bang play at the wall in left field. And to your point, RP, I mean, this, this is two heartbreaking base running plays, or not base, well, yeah, base running plays for Virginia Tech in this game. For, it starts with just an incredible effort by. Well, Pittsburgh, you think about what has happened so far today, and the base running blunders. Panthers could have a significant lead in the rubber match and instead tied at four. It depends on how you look at it. Bags clean. Nothing and one to count to Tyler Graw. Turner Graw, excuse me. And Turner is one for two. 
The second pitch, tried to paint the corner, couldn't do it at 83. Here in the top of the six, we're all trying to fight that one off. This is, Roy, really one of those mental toughness games where both teams, I think, feel a little agitated, felt like they've definitely left some chicken on the bone. You're kind of fighting yourself a little bit, but you got four innings left with a lot on the line. You got to just fight your way through it. Grind it out and Graw swung at the high heat. First strikeout for Neff. Yeah, there you go. I and mean, that's arm strength right there. Graw's a fifth-year senior. He's seen a lot of college baseball, and that's just by you right there. That's a nice pitch. Out of the nine hole today, it is Keaton Burrows. 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs. Burrows getting the start over third base. Has played well. Down the right field line and well out of play. I'm telling you, RP, you hit a ball in the air today. I don't care where it goes. Like, you better you better just stay with it because it could blow anywhere. You don't care where it goes. You don't know where it's going to go. That's right. That's right. Keep tracking it. And the Hokies, remember, gave up that one run on the fly ball to right. Pittsburgh. Look at how that was officially scored. Kendro flies out to left field, is given credit for the RBI. But ruled out after Fogel scored after they crossed paths. Neff in for Stig and upstairs. Yeah, but both teams have had those moments where you're playing golf, RP, and you say, I stink. I actually stink at this game. <laughs> But let's just go win anyway. I would take the mulligan in golf, though. I don't think you can do that today. Yeah, that's right. No mulligans. <laughs> Offensive conferences, yes. Mulligans, no. <laughs> Top of the six hitting. This game had a great pace in the four, first maybe four or five frames. And then the uh, weirdness on a Saturday started to creep in. Foul territory, a lot of room over there, but not enough to hold it this time. Game threes in, in this league, RP, are hard. Game threes are hard to win. Exhibit A right here. Now credit Pitt. They have battled all weekend long against one of the best teams in America so far this year. And Burroughs, the great eye, takes ball four. And that brings us back to the top of the order for the Panthers. Left side of the infield for Pitt, Kendro and Burroughs have had nice days. They have played winning baseball. That's a ball for me. Burroughs at first. Dom Popa. Base hit in an RBI in the third inning. That was his first hit in this series after an 0 for 9 start. High and tight at 92. Shadows starting to creep across home plate. Nep working quickly, off speed. Evens account. We mentioned it earlier, Popa has had his best year as a Pitt Panther. But just in the last week had his 19-game hitting streak come to an end last Sunday against Virginia. He had a 25-game on-base streak. It came to a screeching halt back on Thursday in game one. One and two. RP, he doesn't swing at this pitch. I think it hits him in the shoulder. I thought it was going to as well. <laughs> Look at this. Yikes. Once you made the decision to go, though, it's no turning back. Crowd comes to life. A ball and two strikes from Neff. And hammered foul.
Little number back to the mound. Neff has it, and Virginia Tech retires the side. But the Panthers tie the game on one of the most unusual. And we are tied at four runes. I'm not even sure if I said that accurately, but that's what I got. Yeah, it's just one of those crazy baseball plays. I mean, I think people are generally aware of the rule, but, you know, I, the first time I've ever been part of a, a live game and seen it, it's just, yeah, crazy. If you're pit, you're feeling like, man, have we left some chicken on the bone. And I think Virginia Tech feels the same way. I mean, both teams, um, you know, you're in a tie game, a very winnable game for both teams, but there's been adversity on both sides. Eight, nine in the top of the order, due up first for the Hokies in the home half of the sixth. Mike Rooney, Roy Philpott, a crazy rubber match between these two. Ethan Gibson making start number seven at first base today, batting eight, leading it off. And against Firevet, his brother, of course, was a standout performer at Tech. Well, that had some nasty bite on it. Gibson out in front of that pitch in the dirt. A quick toss down to first for out number one. It's a break and ball RP with real depth to it. I, I think for Ethan Firevet, the ideal scenario for him is everybody, you, you let the other team have one look at him, the lineup, it's one time through because it is a lot of breaking stuff. Uh, but he's crafty and he, he, there's, there's real competitiveness there. He does not give in. And Mike Bell can call that break and ball over and over again. Actually, there's two of them, slider and curveball. And it, when you get one look at him as a hitter, it's a lot. Clay Grady. Takes outside for ball one. Grady hitting 315 out of the nine spot. First place, Virginia Tech in the Coastal Division. A half game ahead of North Carolina. The Tar Heels and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons coming up when we're done in Blacksburg. First pitch at 7 Eastern. This Easter weekend, nearing the halfway point of the conference slate. Getting closer to it. Grady hammers that one just foul. Boy, that was close. That's foul. There you go. Good call. It's the first just time today you. you've used the words good call. Yeah. For the record, we, we have very good umpiring in college baseball. I'll tell you why we're lucky. Most of these guys have pro backgrounds and then just decide the professional umpiring lifestyle is not for them and they come back to college. It's awesome. Doesn't mean I always agree with them, but they're, they're training. They're training in their skill level. That is very, very high. Take a look at our veteran umpiring crew today with Matthew Schaefer calling balls and strikes. 2-2 two, two to Grady, and lofts this one into left. A well, one-out single at the bottom of the order for the Hokies. And guess who's coming up next? Martin, and then on deck after him will be Martini, one of the top. Well, let's see. John Sheff wants to put Grady in motion here. A couple of big hitters coming up. Martin the homer in the fifth, a base hit in the first, walked in the third. He has been everywhere early and often, and a diving play in left field by Graw. Well, put a star by that when it was tailing downward quickly, and Graw came up with it. Turner Graw, this is huge. It line drives the hardest play for an outfielder, regardless of win. But on today, a day like today, where the conditions are really difficult, fight in the sun, that's well done. Not an easy play. Blake Grady racing back to first, two away. Firevet will check the runner. Carson D. Martini. So, if you're Firevet, how aggressive are you in a tie game? With the big bat of Carson Martini up there, and again, we mentioned earlier in the game, 
felt like Don Popa was due. You almost feel like Carson could be due to run into one. Yeah, I, I think if you're if you're Firevet, the problem is Chris Canizero just hit one to the moon in his last at bat. So I, I think your left-handed breaking stuff plays better against D Martini, even though I know he's tied for third in the country in home runs. That, that either way. 14 long balls in the season. That's in first place in the ACC. The pitch gets back to the backstop, and that means Grady is now in scoring position. Yeah, and I, I think he fire uh, actually Pitt did this to Henry Cook in the last at bat, and that was Firebed. Now that you've lost count leverage against Di Martini, I would just throw two balls. I would throw two balls out of the strike zone. If Di Martini wants to offer at them, that's great. Otherwise. You know, go face Chris Canizero, which is no picnic either, but at least do it with a clean count. Ooh. It's a great pitch that makes me really nervous if you're pit. <laughs> I mean, just a, a hanging, that's not a hanging break of ball, but that's a break of ball for a strike. It felt like it was over the plate for a long time. Oh! Another shot high in the air, and the wind trying to knock it down. Funk is able to come up with a play. Nothing simple about that sequence for either side. You tech. The Panthers coming back up to bat. Three innings for a series victory here, RP. Let's do it. Easier said than done. Melendez will lead things off. Two homers in the series. Big rip, hitting 247 now in the year. Search of his first hit here in game three for Jaden Melendez, junior from Miami. Started his career at FIU. And like Rune said, a three-inning contest to determine the series victor. Melendez sneaks it through the left side. And the leadoff man aboard for the Panthers. His first hit of the day. Yeah, Jaden Melendez is a very instinctive player, just like you'd think. His brother's a big leaguer. His dad took 12 teams to the NCAA tournament when he was at Bethune-Cookman in Alabama State, and he was looking to catch a ball out front to the pull side right there. Just happened to get above it and gets that base hit in the 5-6 hole. Neff remains on the hill for the Hokies. Cantwell up next. He's one for two. First pitch, hack it away. And an awkward hop and a play to dive back to the bag. And a bang-bang play results in the first out for now as Cantwell was doing his very best job to hustle down the line. And, well, I'm not sure Gibson got there in time. We will see. I mean, you, you would tell a hitter never dive into first base unless you're, like, trying to beat a pitcher to the bag on a drag bunt or, a, you know, I should say a push bunt up the first baseline. But this is interesting because Gibson got himself, you know, it was the right play for Gibson. He's thinking about, can I get the lead runner at second base? And then he had to dive. Let's see this. I had out at first glance, but let's see. You see Gibson was committed there. Next thing you know, ooh. Boy, great hustle by Cantwell. This might be the look here, RP. Yeah, Gibson. I think he beat him there. I, I think that Gibson tagged the base first. And, I mean, it was close. Yeah, he's out. And plus, the first base umpire is going to have – he had a better look than any human on earth, better than any camera. The first base up was literally great look right there. Matthew Schaefer confirms what we already suspected. And the technical version is the call stands. Three. Single in an RBI's last plate appearance. That came back in the fifth. Melendez in scoring position. Kurtner comes home. How about crossed up fastball? That works, right? Yeah, Funk was saying. Uh, scout report said slider, slider, slider. What was that? Check there the spin go. rate on Ooh. that pitch. Served to straightaway center, tracking is Watson. And Melendez retreats back to second on the quick toss. 
by Ben Watson in center. Spin rate on that over 3,300 3, RP, we're told. And, you know, like anything to me, over 3,000 is elite, elite. So Brady Kurtner can really spin it. What's the approach for a guy like Tyler Bischke coming up and knowing that that's probably coming? You got to see it up. If, if you see it down, you got to take it. It's what, this is one of those pitchers where you have to kind of tell your brain your eyes are lying to you. If your eyes say strike, take it. If your eyes say ball up, swing. It's like that episode in Jerry Seinfeld right back in the day, Costanza. <laughs> it's the opposite. That's up right. is down, left is right, black is white. It worked for George. Yeah. George Costanza is the hitting coach you need against Kurtner, 100%. Just don't let him have anything to do with the jerseys. That's right. Two outs, a ball, and a strike. Go ahead, run in scoring position for the Panthers. Bottom fell out again, 79. It's two and one. I've used the Costanza theory in my own life at times, and it seems to check out, honestly. Yeah, there's something to it. Line drive into left field for a base hit. They'll wave Melendez around. Here comes the throw. Offline, and Pittsburgh has the lead. Tyler Bischke, a clutch A-B. This is, Roy, where having veterans matters. You know, Bischke's a fifth-year player. He's seen plenty of breaking balls in his career. He knows it's the go-to pitch for Kurtner. He's sitting on it. It's not a bad pitch by Kurtner. You got to throw your best stuff and, and, and trust it. And, boy, that's just good baseball right there. Just a good baseball sequence. How about the Pitt Panthers on the road? The hangaround team this weekend. They're losing 5-3 to three in game one. They battle back yesterday at 7-6, to six, holding on late. And then giving number 13 Virginia Tech all it can handle here in game three. So Bischke advances to second on the throw. That'll bring up Justin Fogel, who we know what he's capable of. Driven in seven runs in these three games. Three-run jack yesterday, kick-started. Three-homer inning in the second. That is the... Most explosive inning for Pitt baseball since back in 2016 in terms of number of homers hit. Three and all. Big pitch for Kurtner, a ball and two strikes. Bischke at second. can see it RP there's a desperation in the way Pitt's playing this is a team that had a great non-conference they've just had some misfortune in conference play they are hungry for that first series win just missed tried to paint the corner didn't get the call and now the 2-2 from Kurtner the bender got him. But here comes, went ahead, 5-4, to four, Tyler Bischke. With a big piece of clutch hitting. And the first pitch in the bottom half of the seventh. Canizero flies out to Popa in seven. One pitch, one away. Mike Rooney, Roy Philpott. Big game in the ACC. Got Caroline and Wake Forest down in Winston when we're done here at English Field. So Canizero's retired. That'll bring up Eddie Micheletti. Fire Ved. Head in the count, nothing in one. As if this game needed more emotion, RP. But, I mean, you know, Ethan Fire Ved spent time at Virginia Tech. His brother's an all-time great at Virginia Tech. Yeah, I'm sure this means a lot to him personally. It's There's just a lot going on here. Yeah, the subplot within the subplot, within the sub-story. 
I mean, not to mention Pitt's trying to win its first ACC series. Virginia Tech just had its eight-game winning streak halted yesterday in that 7-6 Panther win, the game in which Tech trailed by six early, nearly came back to complete the comeback. And good luck down in uh, Winston-Salem following up this drop. Back to fire vet. And a nice play for the Panthers hurler. Yeah, first order of here in the bottom of the seventh for Henry Cook. Cook has singled and also walked. One for two. Hokies have had a base runner, at least one in every frame. And let's see if that streak continues. John Sheff, leader of men in the Hokies dugout. That was a great shot. He's got an old school mentality about him, but if you talk to him, you know, he's adjusted to the times and the way they yep. recruit and how they handle the portal and just the way life is in collegiate athletics in 2024. He has adjusted, he has adapted, and listen, Runes, I, I don't know if that's true everywhere with coaches that mm -hmm. have had the same level of success or trying to get to that same level. He's done a great job. Agreed. Really has given his players, like guys like Carson Martini, a lot of room to operate. And and I say I'd say on the staff side, he's given some young, really bright coaches a chance to have a real fingerprint on this thing. And you know, obviously, you know, John Chef, this this is his type of program, so just been a beautiful mix. And the two two, one, two, three go the Hokies and Firevan with Kendro will lead it off. Ethan Firevet has settled things down for the Panthers on the bump after coming in and walking the first batter. Since has retired eight of nine with four strikeouts. Big cut for Kendro. Look out. It evens the count. Kendro's been good today, RP. He's been very steady at shortstop, a game where there's been a bunch of double plays turned. Had a drag bunt that was a big part of the beginning of getting to Griffin Stig and drove a ball to left field. I guess we're going to call that a single, even though it was the ball ended up out of the stadium. Just a very <laughs> strange play, but either way, it was well struck. You could go back and telestrate that sequence and explain how that is a single. Here's another charge. And to left center, the ballpark will hold it. Ben Watson corrals it. And that is a very loud out number one. I thought he got that one, RP. I did too. I mean, it's the biggest part of the park. I get that. Yeah, the wind, wind didn't kill it, but it didn't help it either. Kendro. Has done a lot. That time he flies out to the deepest part of the ballpark. And here's Graw. Turner Graw, the graduate student. Four years at Youngstown State University. A Pittsburgh native. Started in 132 games there. Driven off the glove of Gibson into foul territory, and that's one way to do it. It was hit sharply. Gibson did his best to knock it down. And with one out, the Panthers have a runner at first. Just a, it's a good piece of hitting. That's a good breaking ball by Kurtner. And Graw just gets on it. Uh, you, to your point, nice, nice effort by Gibson. There's nothing you can do there. Second knock of the game for Turner Graw. And that'll bring up Burroughs. 0 for 2. Walked his last time up. That went down in the 6. 91 from Kurtner. And he just missed. I might do hit and run if I'm pit here. What you don't want is a double play to create some momentum for Virginia Tech. 
And if Kurtner bounces a breaking ball, maybe Graw is able to steal the base just clean. You know, if, if it's swing and miss, hit and run, that's fine too. But a double play feels like a real problem right now if you're Pitt. Crawl at first on what here. was uh, ruled as a single. Excuse me there, Runes. Keaton Burrows 0 for 2. Did you say RP it was ruled a single? It was. All right. I like it. Went out of the zone. The runner goes and safe. Ross steals second. That's it. Hit and run. I love it. Absolutely love it. Stay out of a double play. I think it was, in fact, a breaking ball. Even if even if Burroughs makes an out here, you got a runner in scoring position. Yep, hit and run on a breaking ball. That's running good offense right there. Panthers love to get an insurance run in this late hour as Burroughs strikes out. No Kurtner. That's a nice breaking ball. It's an upper level breaking ball right there. Yeah, between Kurtner and Firefed, two nice weapons coming out of the bullpens for both teams today. Fastball misses low as we go back to the top of the order and Dom Popa. Single and an RBI in the third inning for Popa. His brother Nico and, of course, his father Allen also played baseball at Pitt. Ball and a strike. Talk about grit and toughness and awareness at the top of the order for head coach Mike Bell. Popa would be the brand for this team this year. Hammer to first. Gibson up with it cleanly and had him played perfectly along the first baseline to record the out. The rubber match between Pitt and Virginia Tech. Series that started back in 1980. Wouldn't you know it is tied at 23 wins apiece for each side. And they have played like that this weekend, despite the fact the Hokies have gotten off to a faster start and are ranked inside the top 15 of the D1 top 25. Ebo will lead things off. And he would love to get the Hammer and Hokies back on track. It'll be 6, 7, and 8. Ebo, Watson, and Gibson. You want to hang around for Ben Watson. He is... Been active today near the bottom third of the order. Firevet, we mentioned he walked the first hitter he faced and then retired eight of nine and somehow, some way, that one snuck through and Ebel is aboard for the first time with a leadoff double and that was right under the glove of Burroughs. Oh, so unfortunate for Pitt. This, at this point in the game, you're probably in a no-double scenario. And you could see Burroughs just got completely on his heels. You'd love to see him attack that baseball forward because even if you if it, you get a little hockey goalie, it's a single. That, that leadoff double is a big problem if you're Pitt. So Rune's the fifth time today. The Hokies have had the leadoff man aboard. Ebel at second, and we mentioned Watson. A couple of two, or rather two clutch, two out, two strike RBIs. Single in the second, drove in a run. A single in the fourth, did the same thing. Watson squares to bunt and trying to move over Ebel to third. I'll, I'll tell you, RP, if Watson gets the bunt done here, if you're John Sheff, you're probably going bunt, bunt, because remember, the on-deck hitter is Ethan Gibson, who's a freshman who hadn't played a ton, and maybe you've got a, a pinch hitter that's ready for that situation where you just need a fly ball. But um, I wonder if, if we're going sack, bunt, squeeze next hitter here. Interesting. So Ebel doubles through the left side, and again he squares to bunt and takes a strike. And quickly it's nothing in two. Our 
John Sheff encouraging. A lot of times, if I mean, if you like the bunt here, you probably like it just as much with two strikes because Fireved's breaking stuff is not going to be a picnic for Watson, left on left. That's a great way to frame that. It has not been a picnic at all for anybody. Former Hokey comes home. Bottom fell out. Watson fought it off. Yeah, if you're John Sheff, though, that swing for Watson right there. And, you know, again, this is a fifth-year senior who's played a lot of baseball. That's encouraging where he's pretty flustered about the strike call, and, and that was a very competitive swing on what could have been a strike three pitch. Watson, graduate student from Westchester, PA. You mentioned he transferred in from Elizabethtown. Stayed back on it. Hammers it over to first. It was knocked down by Cantwell. No play. And the Hokies getting it done for the minute. Runners at first and third in a one-run game and nobody out. Again, Roy, the, the, the beauty of just veteran players who have been through some things. Watson was pretty flustered early in this at bat, and that is just a great piece of hitting with two strikes. It was on a breaking ball. Cantwell saves a run right there, but Virginia Tech is rocking and rolling here. Frustrating at bat. And a big moment for Gibson. Squares to bunt. Down the first baseline. The throw home. And we are tied. Everybody's safe. And the squeeze works to perfection for the Hokies. I mean, just brilliantly executed. And, you know, what, Virginia Tech is third in the country in home runs, but doesn't mean they can't execute. And that is well done by Gibson. Beautiful safety squeeze. Fire bed. You almost, he almost threw it to home plate, maybe out of frustration. There's really no chance he's getting the runner there. Runners at first and second in a brand new ball game. No one out in the home half of the eighth. Tied at five. This one bunted down the third baseline. And guess what? Everybody's safe again. Small ball paying dividends for the Hokies. Now this Virginia Tech offense, there's such that they're always one swing away from just totally changing the momentum of a game. And this inning right here, two beautiful bunts. That one right there by Grady. An infield single with two strikes. This inning's really just been born of competitiveness. And for the Panthers, Matt Porter getting loose in the bullpen, the lefty. Matthew Fernandez, the righty. And a curveball floats across or called strike nice one. Back at the top of the order with Christian Martin. And we try to catch our breath here for a moment. <laughs> it's an inning that I don't know you could forecast, given how it started with a leadoff double. One and one. I, I think if you're Mike Bell, you're in a real pickle here, RP, because you know, you'd love to change pitchers and just try to let some of the air out of this inning. It's just, it's pretty electric right now. But with Martin and Martini being left-handers, Fireved's the matchup you want. Martin, a homer. He was walked. He was also singled today. Take strike two. Boy, it's a huge pitch right here, isn't it? You can feel it. They need a punch out so bad if you're pit. Base hit and everything changes. Martin to second. They'll come home and the force out is there. A heads up play by Bischke to record the first field to double play depth to have a chance to escape this jam. Absolutely. Now the middle infielders can just play for the traditional double play. What you would teach your infielders, though, RP, is if the ball is softly hit, take your single out at home plate. 
Nothing and one to Demartini. Leads the ACC in home run. Squares the bunt beautifully down the first baseline. And the Hokies have the lead. How about that? You think this dude is, is all about winning or what? Kid could win the home run crown in college baseball, and here's a chance to win a game, take a lead in the bottom of the eighth, and instead of getting his swing off with one strike, he executes a safety squeeze perfectly. I mean, that's, that's what championship baseball looks like right there. That was an amazing moment for a slugger like Demartini. And they will walk Chris Canizero to bring up Eddie Micheletti. Hokies have come back again in this series. Grady at third, Martin at second, Canizero at first for Eddie Micheletti. One for three, he scored a run today. And what will this game yield next? First pitch strike from Firevet. Boy, it's just incredible. This team is third in the nation out of 305 teams in home runs. And this inning that could win the series for him has got three bunts in it. Three. And we've seen some wacky frames where the ball hasn't left the infield and Pittsburgh scored twice. We've seen base runners cross paths. Eliminating a two-run homer. You see Micheletti's numbers with runners in scoring position this year. And the 0-2, he stays alive. You said it, RP. Ben Watson is the unsung hero in this inning. Did not execute the bunt, but had that infield single with two strikes. Changed the complexion of this inning completely. Hokies have struck for two runs. To regain the advantage, the 0-2. Bottom fell out again, foul tipped into the mitt. Fireved with something to say to himself in his glove. But Virginia Tech gets... Trying to stay in front of North Carolina in the Coastal Division standings. They are a half a game ahead of the Tar Heels. We'll get you to North Carolina and Wake Forest when we are done here in Blacksburg. That series continues in Winston. And a first pitch out of the zone. For Little, Jaden Melendez, fastball at 92. There it is. Throws it almost 40% of the time, that breaking ball, and it's got a big whiff rate on it. 55% on that pitch. And a whip rate of 100% on that one. The series in the balance, and Little comes out dealing. <laughs> Getting ornery in this crowd. I love it. All kinds of riled up. Well, you come in and you execute your best pitch if you're Jordan Little. That is one heck of a slider. Straight filth out of the bullpen from Little. There it is again, and he spins it in for a strike. And he is working quickly. Boy, this is Cantwell. That if you're Pitt, you need Cantwell to do something to extend this at bat. Little is cruising right now. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Cantwell didn't have a chance. I mean, he is ripping this slider right here. You can know it's coming. It's a good 15 miles an hour off of the fastball. That pitch has got some real depth to it. Pit down to its final out. C.J. Funk takes low and away. Be careful now, Jordan. R.P. Funk can run one out of here. He does have some pop in the bat. Spinner exits the zone quickly. Funk today one for four.
291 on the season. You mentioned the power. He's got three long balls on the campaign. Wanted it upstairs. He'll get it in the zone. It's 2-1. and one. That's well done. 2-0, and you maybe you're a little bit too amped up, and you just keep ripping that slider. 12 strikeouts today for the Hokies pitching. Funk sends it to shallow right. Tackett's got it, and the Hokies win. Declare. 